at seven different steps on how to love yourself. Number one, you first have to believe that you are loved. Let's imagine me and you both go to a restaurant. We're gonna go to Cheesecake Factory, not me and you together, okay, calm down. Me separate from you, but we're both gonna go at different times. So let's say you go three months before me. When you go to the Cheesecake Factory, it's going to be the grand opening. They're going to have the best staff. They're going to make sure they're on top of everything. They're going to make sure all the food is taken care of. Everything's going to be clean, amazing, pristine. When I go to the Cheesecake Factory, though, the head chef has quit because of some internal issues. The food is awful. I, when I get my cheesecake, it's half melted. You're going to say... I would definitely recommend the Cheesecake Factory. And I'm going to describe the same place that you went to as the worst experience that I've ever had. Now imagine if when I went to the restaurant, let's say I hadn't eaten for three days. But now because I have went there and I'm starving, I could literally eat a horse. When I go there, it doesn't matter how the food is seasoned. I'm just glad to be eating something. And so I say that to say a change of your perspective can drastically change what your version of the truth is. Your truth will conform to whatever it is your perspective is. Your experiences, right, play into your beliefs, and then your beliefs play into your experiences, and then it's a snowball effect, right? And so you have to break the cycle by breaking your way of thinking. But we don't realize a lot of the time that we're speaking the things that we don't want to see and we're speaking the things that we don't want to have in our lives into our lives simply by continuously believing it, putting thought power into it. Then as we see it, we continue to confirm it and be like, yeah, no, this is this is what it is. Yeah, no, I'll never be able to find love. Yeah, you know, this guy, this guy did me wrong that I met on a dating app. They're all like that. I'm never going to be able to find someone good. And it's a vicious cycle. This is number two. You have to know exactly what you want out of life. Keyword exactly because the same way if i tell you let's meet up in the afternoon sometime there's a good chance that even if we show up both in the afternoon we'll miss each other is the same way when if you don't have absolute clarity about what you want you can miss opportunities you can miss the person that you are seeking you can miss the meetup or the hangout or you can miss whatever it may be you can miss what was meant for you when you have clarity in your life you will actually know the things you need to be doing that serve you. Because at the end of the day, loving yourself is not about serving others. It's not about being the best girlfriend. It's not about being the best wife. Loving yourself is about learning how to serve you. I always recommend to you guys, you should be writing down a wish list, meaning what you want in a relationship and what you want in a partner, what you want in, in your career, in your, what you're passionate about, and it should consist of everything that you want in detail. Number three, get rid of habits and people that don't align with your vision. For example, if I'm a man, I am a man, and I'm training for a triathlon it, that's in a couple of weeks, but I'm going to the club every weekend and getting blackout drunk, that habit is probably not going to serve me well for training for a triathlon because I'm spending a whole bunch of time getting drunk, which means I can't go out and train hard because the next day I'll be all hung over. And so I'm suffering because I'm not going to be able to reach my goals to the point where I want to reach my goals because every day I'm hung over because I'm going out every weekend or all the time. If you're surrounding yourself and it's friends or partners with people that don't love themselves, it's going to be much harder for you to even feel comfortable in doing things for yourself, in loving yourself. Number four, you must change your environment. If you are in a position where you feel like the things you are doing currently, even as it relates to your love life, are not working for you, you need to make a change. I'm laughing because it sounds so simple in theory, and it's, but a lot of us are doing things and living our lives in a way that is not working for us, yet we continue to not make changes. So for example, those of you guys, and I know you don't want to hear this, I know you don't want to hear this, but I'm going to tell you anyways, I know you don't want to hear it. Those of you who are on dating apps 
and the dating apps haven't been working for you and the men you're meeting on the dating apps or the women haven't worked out, then you need to change your environment. You can't keep on the dating apps and then expecting that magically something is going to change for the sake of changing. Number five, try things. I know when I say these things out loud and you're hearing them from me, you're like, this is so obvious. It's like, I didn't know this. Tell me I didn't know. Did you really? Why are you here then? What is your favorite restaurant? If you never went out to try that restaurant for the first time, how could you possibly know now that it is your favorite restaurant? There was once upon a time where you had never tried that restaurant before and you actually had to go and try it for the first time in order for you to realize, I love this restaurant. This is amazing food. I'm going to come back here. And then it became your favorite restaurant. If you never step outside of your comfort zone and try things, you will never be able to discover the things that you truly enjoy. Number six, stop focusing on what others are doing. In order for you to properly love yourself, you need to have singular focus on you and what you're doing. Do you know who Kim Kardashian's last ex was? How many of us have a a celebrity that we know how old their children are? We know how old they are. We know how many kids they got. We know who their spouse is. There's not, I'm not saying there's anything particularly wrong with knowing, because even I know, I know who Kim Kardashian's ex is. Her ex is Pete Davidson. It's so easy to fall into the trap of being so invested in someone else's life, zapping all of that energy away from yourself. Because the problem is that you only have 100% of your energy. So if you add more energy into some places, It's going to take away your ability to have energy in other places. The more energy you're putting in and investing into other people's lives, what they are or what they aren't doing, the less energy you have for yourself. The last and final one, give yourself everything you want from other people, whether that be consistency, whether that be gifts, whether that be just pure unconditional love, whatever it may be, make sure you're giving that to yourself. You want someone to buy you fancy dinners, buy yourself a fancy dinner every once in a while, right? Do the things that you, if you want other people to treat you a particular way, treat yourself that way first, and you'll begin attracting that energy towards you. If I wanted a confident woman, but I was a super, super shy guy, in the corner. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I didn't want to look at anyone in the eyes. I couldn't even hold a conversation. There's a much more likely chance that I'll attract a shy person than I will a confident person. And there's a much more likely chance that if I was actually a confident person, then I would attract a confident person. 